All right, guys, what is up? Welcome to Hoodie Eats, episode 57. Brian Jr. Grubbs, underground hip-hop artist from Gary, Indiana, South South Chicago. Today, we have a super special episode, not only just because I'm back in Chicago, but because we haven't eaten Chicago-style pizza on the channel in a really freaking long time. Today, we are on the near south side on 35th and Halstead in the neighborhood of Bridgeport right now, and we are going down to back of the yards. Why am I so excited about Back of the Yards? Because it's probably Chicago's most historical neighborhood um, as far as what people really know about Chicago. It's home to the most old school historic meatpacking plants in the country and it has books written after the goddamn thing. So I'm super excited to get down there, eat some pizza, talk some history and ride this dirt bike in, of course, the dirt because all the snow is melting and the roads are absolutely filthy. So I'm going to do my best to keep my GoPro dry and this lens clear as it is extra slick and extra dirty out out there today. Let's jump out on the CRF 450 and go do this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I almost put diesel in this thing. What the fuck? No, 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 no. What am I doing? Cancel. Jesus. Unless I'm tripping, I don't think you run on diesel, my friend. I don't know why you brought me to that pump. Fill her up, fill her up. She really don't take too much gas. 1.1. That was pretty empty. Good to see you, man. That was an interesting one. I don't think I've ever had an artist, although they are all over the place, uh, come up to me during uh, Hood Eats. A lot of times, Chicago underground rap artists and just artists in general will come up to you and try to give you a CD, and then once they've given you the CD, then they want money. So I always try to just say, no, 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 I'll, I'll look you up and I'll, I'll listen to your music on the, on the internet or something. Because they can really, uh, especially if you're a tourist, man, they can really milk some money out of you. I've seen guys downtown milk people for 20, 30, 50 bucks for their fucking CD. They just, once once you get that CD, man, uh, it, it, it turns into a different conversation. District 9. I got my LotWorks headlight on today because a lot of people are not expecting to see a motorcycle since there was just snow on the roads yesterday. Another huge thing to keep in mind for all you Midwest guys that, you know, ride in between all the snow is how much salt is still on the ground. That and the drivers just aren't looking for you, man. So super slick, plus drivers not looking for you. Always a lot more dangerous uh, riding in the winter. Look at that old school Bridgeport restaurant. I bet you that place is really good too. Surprisingly, this thing's pretty good um, in the water or not, man. The tires that are on it and stuff, it's just it's really well. A little thick lady and her thick dog. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean when I say it's slick out. Do crazy layers on the dirt bike. <laughs> And I got good tires on this thing too, so I don't know why. Drift in the Supermoto is just so much harder than like the sport bike. Oh. And even more so, the sport bike's harder than the than the Harley. I think the Harley is the easiest to drift because it's got so much weight. It says road closed, but we're on a dirty bike. And once we cross Pershing Road going south, we have now entered back of the yard. I can't believe how many neighborhoods there are in Chicago and how many of them we've done and back of the arch just isn't one of them. We're gonna turn right on Root Street here. And look at that. Stockyards Industrial Park. And right in front of us is the historic entryway into the stockyards with the railroad that still runs right by it. Union Stockyards, chartered in 1865. So this Union Stockyard was truly going before the city of Chicago even annexed this neighborhood in 1889. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to talk a little bit about history right away for this one, guys, for it to even make sense. As Chicago began to grow in the early to mid 1800s, it became really apparent that, guess what? There's people moving here, and guess what people do? They eat a lot of food. And with this being the biggest city, smack dab in the middle of the country, it needed to have its own meat. This quickly became the largest stockyard in the entire country. 
pretty much everything we're driving through right now. A lot of smaller corporations have bought them up ever since the fall of a lot of the great meatpacking companies and cattle housing that used to live down here. I'll tell you what, even from the few that remains, I'm sorry I can't show this in a video, but it still smells like death. Like, like dead bodies. Like it's still, there's still that stench in the air that a lot of creatures met and are still meeting their maker down here every day. Tyson has an enormous meat packing plant down here and you still see smokestacks billowing. The working conditions down here in the mid to even all the way into the 19th century were truly appalling. So much so that a book called The Jungle was written about it. And I don't know about you, but uh, we had to read The Jungle uh, in middle school or in high school as it really did describe the horrors and just the absolute barbarianism that uh, existed in the meatpacking industry back then. Not saying that it's still not really there now, but just a totally different form back then. As you can see, this is just Chicago's industrial mega center now, all back in the yards. All the refrigerated tractor trailers running. Probably got some, some meat stored in them. Let's see if I can do some circles. So much clutch work on this 450 to do circles, man. This is truly the best bike I had for the conditions, guys. I mean, the Harley and this boy bike, with it being so wet and slick out, that would have been a nightmare. And the 450, I could just, you know, power wash off. And it's got the stickiest tires on any bike I own, too. Huge garbage processing plants down here too. So as back of the yards and the industries grew down here, it's no surprise that the city of Chicago annexed this neighborhood as the city continued to expand. This just grew the stockyards that much more and began flooding this neighborhood south of all the plants with Irish, German, and Czech butchers from all over the world. Man, I'm telling you, you can really just smell that stench coming off a of test of produce there. Holy hell. Just all these big food processing places is crazy. I really wish I could convey the smell that's uh, that's around here between the garbage processing and the and all the animal processing. It's just, ugh, nasty. Chicago Meat Authority, your authority on quality meats. So the stockyards literally runs from 47th to Pershing, north and south, and from Halstead all the way to western, east and west. So it's a pretty big area of the south side here. And everywhere south of that, between 47th and Garfield, is all part of back of the yard. Lots of old homes that have been here. Oh, dirt bike! For a long time in this neighborhood. Not a lot of new homes getting built here. And unfortunately, it is becoming one of Chicago's most abandoned neighborhoods as well. I can't blame them much either because I know the stench and the contaminants around here is insane all produced by those industrial plants. How are you? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I would be schmitten to not talk about this. This right here is a Chicago classic during the winter time. So everyone shovels out their own spots like this. And this is the way that people maintain those spots for when they're not here and at work. So if you shoveled out your own spot, you put out something like that, you put out a couch, you put out a bicycle, whatever. You put out a playhouse. That way when you come home from working your 10 hour day at the meatpacking plant, you don't end up shooting somebody in the face for your parking spot that you just shoveled two hours in the morning to get out of. Because believe me, that drives me nuts too. I've done that before, oh my God. Nothing makes my blood boil more when I come home and somebody is in my spot. Look at all of them. Got a bonfire going. So let's fast forward a little bit. As back of the yards continue to grow all the way up until World War II, the book, The Jungle, did come out and some of these things began to come to light about this neighborhood. As a result, the city started to sanction and bar a lot of the big plants from being down in the stockyards and began to pass legislation regulating workers' conditions down there because the conditions for the, for the animals were one thing, but the conditions for the workers were also absolutely terrible.
Before we get some deep dish, I might want some elote. Are you open? You have elote? I'll have a, I'll have a cup of elote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, light, light chili. A little bit of chili. It is a Honda, yeah. Why do you like Hondas or not like them? Oh, no, I like them. Okay, some people some people don't like them. <laughs> I never know. Uh, um, my boyfriend has a CBR 600. Oh, okay, cool. My little brother's got a CBR 600. I got a 636. That's my sport bike, but this is my my fun dirt bike. Classic out here in Chicago, the little Elote, Elote guys. I know I'm going to eat pizza, but I need to fill in the gas. I haven't eaten today. Look at this guy's setup, man. He's got a tractor trailer that pulls. Wow. It pulls his whole stuff. That's awesome. That's quite the setup you got there with the tractor. That's awesome. That's ingenious. Thank you. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Happy New Year. Got a little bit of that awesome street corn elote with light chili powder as I am a gringo and I don't like spicy stuff all that much. So, give this a try. Thank you. Very good. Very spicy though. Be safe down here, huh? <laughs> Happy New Year, guys. As the 1960s came and left, and a lot of these major meatpacking places started to either consolidate or lay off a whole lot of workers. This neighborhood began to change. It was affected by its bad neighbors to the south and to the east, Englewood and Woodlawn, and the drug epidemic beginning to flood into those neighborhoods. And very soon, a lot of the Czech and German and Irish immigrants that once inhabited these neighborhoods left, and a lot of Hispanic and African American began to move in. As there still was a lot of manual labor jobs close to a lot of good schools. Within the 80s and the 90s, a large presence of not only Hispanic but also African American gangs began to claim and fight over subsections within the southern portion of Back of the Yards. In the early 2000s, the city renamed this neighborhood from Back of the Yards to New City, but as crime continued to wave in, vast swaths of land began to become a very common sight here. Homes went into foreclosure as people continued to lose their job from the stockyard shrinking in its need of manpower. And we all know what happens when a lot of vacant homes start to become present in a neighborhood. Criminals always tend to use them. In 2021, New City or Back of the Yards was Chicago's 13th most deadly neighborhood of its 77. 121 people were shot here, 15 were killed, and 106 were wounded due to gun violence here in this neighborhood. And when we look at the total size of this neighborhood and the few select pockets that it's happening in, it is an epidemic down here in Back of the Yards. Whenever you see the red X on a home like that, it means the city is um, deemed it unsafe to live. A little uh, fact as we ride around in a lot of these abandoned homes down here. Truly, there's two pockets, one in the middle and one to the south with its uh, border neighborhood of Englewood where gang members have fought over this territory for years. It's been that way for a long time and it's probably not gonna change anytime soon as we are now on the south border of Garfield Boulevard. That side is Englewood, this is West Englewood and all this is back of the yards to the north. And a lot of the times the feuds that start on that border will either sink into back of the yards or into Englewood. This would be an extremely peaceful neighborhood if it was strictly the stockyards. However, a lot of the housing that all these workers used to need from the stockyards has now become vacant, foreclosed on, or just in a really bad state of decay here. The current makeup of this neighborhood is 63% African American, 39% Hispanic, and 9% other. The 450 loves vacant lots. Down here on 52nd and Carpenter. Man, these alleys are fucked up. Love life. Be happy. God is great. I recently read an article about Back of the Yards on how crime has dramatically gone down here. But I think if, if we want to talk about that, we need to also talk about how much the population as a total has gone down here as well. Not much. Trying to, trying to take advantage of this warm weather while we got it. Yeah, but it's making my, look at how dirty my bike has gotten. The roads have destroyed it, man. Yeah, this is wrong weather for biking. It is, and it's really slick out on the streets, but I'm doing my best. You don't be scared, you go all the way over with that thing when you pop it up like that, you don't scared, you go all the way back over. That's what that's for, the rear brake. So, it, whenever you go too far back, you press the rear brake, and it slows the rear wheel, and it brings it back down. You gotta be right on the money to know exactly. Yeah, to, 
to, to balance the throttle from bringing it back and the brake from bringing it back down is like a, it's kind of like an art. You gotta have what? You gotta have some nuts. Nuts or nuts? Oh, nerves. Nerves. <laughs> that too. Yeah, not too bad. Happy New Year's, guys. That article had said that, you know, back of the yards is violence here has gone down significantly, like over 50%. But I, what I don't think they've talked about is I'm probably being conservative with over half these lots are either empty or boarded up. So yeah, your violence is gonna go down, but this neighborhood has become extremely abandoned. I think it's only second to, to Englewood to the south is as far as um, abandoned neighborhoods go, which is a really sad state to see any neighborhood in America because this property is extremely valuable and it's a you know got a whole lot of history to it because you wouldn't have Chicago and it wouldn't have expanded the way it did unless we had food and the immigrants and the workers that came here for that food and work. And uh, back of the arts is that neighborhood that, that really did begin to uh, rapidly expand the city. So this artwork, man, the Virgin Mary with all the birds. I don't know why, I'm sorry if you guys don't like graffiti as much, but I really do just find it very artistic. Turn right here on 49th. And just in case you thought I forgot about the pizza part of this Hood Eats with that elote, I did. Because we're gonna turn left here on Ashland and there it is, Pata Zitano's Pizza. Bada bing, bada boom. Pata Zitano. Very Italian. My bike is not Italiano. She's very dirty on Very dirty. Hello, uh, could I have the slice? Do you guys have cheese? Is it good, the cheese pizza? I'll do that. You guys have been around here for a long time, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 40 years. 30 years? You guys wouldn't happen to have deep dish ready, would you? Maybe it's only a whole pizza. Only whole pizza? Okay. You guys are really famous for the deep dish, no? Large pizza. The large, famous stuffed pan. Man, I'm looking forward to this, man. I haven't had some good pizza in a long time. 49th and Ashland. I don't know about that one, guys. Positanos, I know you've been here for 30 years, but just not my favorite slice of, uh, of Chicago pizza, to be honest. Man, I left my headlight on this whole time. And she started, thank God. Time to go get wet and dirty again. Man, am I full. Elote and pizza? Guys, I know most of the time I'll tell you to, to you know, go try it, or I'll tell you, you know, nine out of 10, or I've even had a couple of times I'm in like 10 out of 10. Amazing food. Best I've ever had. Um, I can't say the same for Palatanos. The, the ratings were not that, you know, they didn't live up to the hype for me. It had like a 4.5, but it is graffiti. Beautiful. It did not, did not live up to the hype for me. That is a standard issue piece of pizza. Not a Chicago style either, or Detroit style, or New York. That is a standard piece of pizza. If I was to pull over in I don't fucking know, somewhere in Virginia. I would expect that piece of pizza, but not in the not in the south side of Chicago, man, when you've been there for 30 years. Come on. Come on, man. That was a five, maybe six out of ten. The sauce was bland. Whole bunch of just plain generic cheese and kind of greasy. This thing is so fucking loud. I don't got music playing right now. I just realized how fucking loud this thing is. <laughs> And it's got stacked pipes. Everyone keeps telling me to put FMFs or something like that on it. A couple of you guys might be wondering, Brian, how are you riding with the snow just melting and it's still being so cold out and stuff? This right here, our windbreakers, I'm telling you. Our windbreakers with some latex and my fanny pack. That is literally the key. If you don't let me know that this windbreaker is like the ultimate game changer for riding in the cold, I don't know. 
come up to me at a ride and uh, slap me in the face. I'll let you slap me if you if you don't like uh, don't like my windbreakers. I don't know what to tell. Just let me know that you're slapping me for that before you slap me though. I like that hat. That is a beautiful hat. Uh, Brian 636. Brian Roll down the window. What's your Instagram? All right, guys, we just crossed over Pershing and we are leaving back of the yards. You guys know what I'm about to say and you know what I'm about to tell you to do. So, you know, just do it. It helps out the algorithm a lot. It helps me out. It helps, you know, keep these videos coming. It helps me want to wake up on a 40 degree December morning and want to go record a Hood Eats. I love it. So, you know, like the video, subscribe, comment. You guys know what to do. I try to interact with every single one of you guys down in the comments. And guys, as I leave the south side, um, I really do want to emphasize this. And, you know, after talking about uh, New City or Back of the Yard so much and, and it struggles with violence, please put the guns down. Respect life. We can solve problems without violence is what I'm trying to say. I hope you guys enjoyed episode 57. Episode 57. As always, this is your least favorite motovlogger, Brian636. I'm out of here. Peace.